think my earliest memories are going with my dad to hobby shops and purchasing model kits. You built ships and airplanes. And tanks. And tanks. Hmm. That was very popular right after the Second World War. My generation came along and the exciting stuff was cars. I think one of the first kits that we ever built together was the Ravel 56 Ford pickup. I was probably six years old. I really wasn't at a point where I could read the instructions, but you sat with me and we spent two nights at the kitchen table and assembled the kit. It was unpainted. I think you did most of the, the lifting and gluing and I did a lot of watching, but it was incredibly exciting to see something assembled. My dad got me started, my first model, I think, I want to say it's one of the junior craftsmen. It was either 59 Edsel or 59 Ford. I could kind of remember putting it together on the kitchen table and using a, using a butter knife to put the screws in, breaking all the parts off the trees, you know, just twisting them off. Yeah, every piece of chrome that they gave you, you had to put all that stuff on, all the antennas and decals and whatever came in it. It was good. You could build a model in an hour. Yeah. That was so nice. Yeah. And I was hooked. So you've been building models now for how many years? 89 minus whatever. That's pretty good. <laughs> you as an architect were trained, you built architectural models as well. Right. Part of selling a design was to build a model. And then build the real thing. Right. Right, just like cars. When I was growing up, I can remember you building a ship model with the rigging, following just pages of instructions on how the rigging went in. I just right. thought that was an incredible thing to follow that and do all the rigging. It was very impressive. But then I got involved more with building buildings, and the hobby was furniture. Building lots of furniture. I enjoy, still enjoy building furniture. You got me back building models. I'm glad the channel influenced you. Got me a Land Rover and I decided to make it into a police car. The fun of all of us is doing the research, yeah. searching and searching for what a police car looks like in the, either New Zealand or Australia or Scotland or England or somewhere. And one thing I found, the part across the roof, the flashing lights, there's got to be a thousand different versions. Every, every town, every country seems to have a different version. So I decided to make them. And I used... Oh. Save everything. <laughs> everything you've got, save it, you never tell. A lens from a fluorescent light fixture in the ceiling. Yeah. Making the parts oh, very in the light cool. fixture on the roof. Yeah. Working on getting the right color. I think this is better for color. Okay, so wait, this is clear plastic. Yes. How, how did you tint it blue? I painted with acrylic paint. Ah. Painted in between yeah. and then glued two halves together. <laughs> so you get all the light bulbs front and back. Very nice. And then what do you call these things? You have a name for them, the, the stubby bits. Well, we like to call them sprue, but technically... Okay. According to Jim Keeler, they're actually runners. Runners, Which is okay. the proper term. Well, I found one on one of those things, just about the right width that we cut these down to become the, the bottom runner. Nice. The light fixtures. So after all these years, as you get back into it, you're scratch building. Yeah. You're doing your research, you're finding a need. And then your, your grandmother <laughs> also saved everything. Good Scottish woman. And one of her hobbies was doing things out of leather. And she had, I found a box full of moth and mouse-eaten leather, but some of it is in great shape, and it's like paper thick, really thin. So... So it's glove leather that you can glove easily Glove leather. Wow. I figured I could do the seats yeah. for the Land Rover, which are really are leather in many cases. Sure. Out of leather. Oh, yeah. My first 
first glue kit was the Uno Buick. I still have a fender left after I blew it up with a firecracker. <laughs> I'm actually a third generation. My grandfather wanted to fly model airplanes and he bought everything to fly model airplanes. And I, when I say everything, I mean everything. He had dozens of kits, dozens of boxes of props, every tool needed to build these things. I mean, boxes of X-Acto blades. And unfortunately, he passed away when I was only like one years old. He had a room that he was gonna build all this and this stuff sat there. And my father, he's a model railroad. And so he built a eight foot by eight foot model uh, layout for us in that room yeah. that was his dad's. Oh, and so we, we play with the trains and all the tools and we play with X-Acto knives and all like that. And I was just kind of a born car guy. And so it was like, okay, I'm gonna just build cars. So I've built models my entire life. <laughs> and I'm into one-to-one -one cars too. I, I got plenty of projects with that. The models allow me to build stuff like that because we all can't have garage fulls of yeah. hot rods like that, although that would be really cool. <laughs> then I got two airplanes. I had the Haviland DH4 and the Haviland DH9. The reason I was interested in those, here's a picture of two World War I airplane pilots in the RAF. No, it was the Royal Flying Corps, which became the Royal Air Force. There's two pilots standing in front of a de Havilland DH-4. And this guy is your grandfather. Yeah, your dad. Either 18 or 19 years of age. And he was a pilot in the First World War, one of these guys, and survived. Yeah. As far as I can tell, these pilots were not assigned a particular... They didn't say, there is your airplane. Oh, okay. It was a case of they'd get up in the morning, the crew would have loaded the bombs aboard, hmm. put the gas in, yeah. and they would pilot whichever one worked. <laughs> whichever so, one started. If it, sta if it starts, yeah. good. That's yours. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Doing a lot of research on what the planes all looked like. Found this as a, a museum in Australia. A military mm -hmm. museum had a real plane, a real DH-4. And this shows the, the pilot's cockpit, all the details. The seat, Yeah. it's a wicker seat with yeah. leather cushions. And obviously the reason for that was build everything as light as possible. Sure. So, so you have much. three projects going at once, really. Yes. That's pretty good. Well, that's, you said. <laughs> May you always have a bunch of models on your uh, projects yeah. on your bed. Sure. And trying to find more stuff in the junk pile to make parts out of. My dad was building slot cars when I was about five or six or seven. We did a lot of slot car racing because that was big in those days. Mm -hmm. And he would buy AMT model kits, take the body and adapt them to slot car chassis. And one long, boring summer day, there was a model car kit up on top of the refrigerator that he had earmarked to make a slot car out of. And I called him at work and asked if I could build that into a model, and he said yes. What I learned from working with, with everyone in my family was a sense of craftsmanship and learning patience. Everyone's house growing up really was, you know, what they now call a maker space. My dad's father had a great shop in his basement. The lathe was from 1937, an mm. Atlas lathe that you learned to use as a child, sure. which is, was amazingly dangerous. <laughs> There's a Walker Turner uh, drill press that you may have seen in the background of some of my videos. It's in my shop which I use occasionally. Sold yeah. by Susan Roebuck yeah, they, back when yeah. machinery was made to last forever. Yep. And you're the third generation using it. Third, and even my son has used. So it's fourth. How did you get started in the hobby? Oh, my story is the same <laughs> as everybody else's. It's with yeah. dad at the kitchen table yeah. and building the Red Baron kit. 
It was my dream car. And I saw a picture of it, and I saw it in person at the Albany Custom Car Show. And Dad got me the kit with the Hot Wheels car, and we built it. And uh, it was not as detailed as what I do today, but still it's that fond memory with Dad. You know, and I always carry it in the heart. Well, thanks for getting me started on uh, hmm. your crazy hobby. Good. Good. Really enjoy, and you too. Hmm. Can I do all three at the same time? There you go. And probably buy a couple more in the meantime. That's that's, that's how it works. <laughs> oh, the tagline. Right. What's oh. what's the tagline? Follow your muse wherever you find it. May you always have a project on your bench. Thanks for watching. Wow. So let's pull the model.